It's Monday. It's November 21st. And the word of the day is recrudescence, which means the return of something unpleasant after a period of relief. Used in a sentence that we're going to be talking about today. Somebody announced his recrudescence last week for the 2024 election. <laughs> yeah, apparently Musk wanted in on that recrudescence action, too. <laughs> <laughs> Look, people, it doesn't have to be a recrudescence if everyone fucking votes, okay? It could just be that one crudescence. Yeah, that's that right. Uh, I'm No Illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And broadcasting delayed from America's Far Center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, Elon makes us long for the humble brilliance of Krang. The World <laughs> Cup gets so immoral, even NFL fans will start to get uneasy. And Herschel Walker has some important information that could affect your vampire weekend. <laughs> but first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight. Are my fellow skeptic rats, no illusions, and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, happy almost Thanksgiving. You want to give thanks for anything in advance? Mm, let me see. Since our last episode came out, how about control of the Senate, baby? Team holding patter. Team <laughs> okay. holding patter. Is Team it, holding patter. Since we're th- being thankful in advance, can I just do Twitter's bankruptcy? <laughs> yeah, that'll work. That'll okay. work. All right. All right. In our lead story tonight, we have some quintessential re- crudescence to talk about <laughs> we, we have the brand new picture in the textbook next to the definition of recrudescence and it's donald trump's stupid fucking face with his cloaca of a mouth announcing that he's running for president again just to review he's coming off a one-term presidency with two impeachments that's a record a <laughs> homicidally mishandled pandemic a failed coup attempt at the last minute of his one term, and now he's under four different criminal investigations, federal and state. And his hand-selected batch of election deniers and crudite enthusiasts completely (laughs) fucked the GOP shot at a red wave in Biden's first midterm. And that, right then, that's when Donald Trump said to himself, I'm crushing it right now. It's time to announce my campaign. <laughs> yep. So he did. Yep. It's fucking nuts. You have to be extremely selective about which of his failures to include when you're putting together a comically long list of his failures. Okay, guys, <laughs> guys, if if everyone let a comically long list of failures stop them, some of us wouldn't be on the podcast, okay? Maybe me and Donald <laughs> just have the eye of the tiger. Have okay, you considered? <laughs> Yeah, okay, so just thinking back, you might remember Trump's announcement in 2015 about his campaign that involved a literal golden escalator. Mm -hmm. Well, given all the shitty context this time around, his handlers clearly made him tone it down for this announcement. I'm guessing there was like a wooden step stool mentioned at some point as a joke (laughs) or like, oh, you could stand on a squatty potty, something like that. But Trump did not get that joke, so they skipped it. Very sad. Instead, he spent an hour harumphly reading a boring speech of lies, like uh, like a kid being forced to read out loud in class when he didn't want to. We're going to get to the lies in a second. But first, I want to talk about the very first thing that happened at the announcement. It was so good. Trump played entry music for himself, like he was showing up at the WWE, and he went with... Do you hear the people yes. sing? Do yes. you hear <laughs> fucking the lame is? First of all, that's a song about a failed uprising. Yep. I don't think he's aware of that. He <laughs> thought it was an uprising song. They fail in that uprising. Also, the characters who sing that song would have guillotined Donald Trump in 2017 if they were around at the time. L- like early 2017, right <laughs> yeah. away. Yeah, and unless we leave the subject of guillotining Donald Trump too quickly i I have a serious question about that given (laughs) all of his neck flubber um do you think you'd have to lift the the guillotine and and give it a second chance like would it be like a a bread's too warm kind of a situation (laughs) yep absolutely gotta go against the grain we'll go (laughs) on the other side we'll hit him the other way can we get a serrated little blade for this one (laughs) (laughs) also just who the fuck is at the weird intersection of the Venn diagram of Les Mis fans and Donald Trump yes. fans? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, That's Tommy, weird. I was just listening to my favorite musical and I had a great idea. <laughs> I have no idea, but that's what he played. So Trump walks out 
do a song about a failed insurrection. And then he has to stop like a few steps away from the podium because he had a second entry song yep. ready to go. He played the latest thing. Do you hear what people saying? And then he played Proud to be an American by Lee Greenwood while he slowly shuffled his feet in tiny little baby steps to finish the last 10 feet of walking before the stage during the course right, of that the, second song. The other song was too French. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And then, of course, we got a USA, USA chant for way too long before he finally started speaking. Yeah, which again, considering that he tried to overthrow the American government last time, it's a little like me making an entrance to Brett Kavanaugh's family singing him happy birthday, you know? Just, <laughs> it's not our thing. All right, well, that brings us to an hour straight of lying. Here's just a handful of examples that you might hear from shitty Uncle Frank at Thanksgiving of things that Trump said during the speech. Make sure Uncle Frank gets thoroughly corrected and then escorted out of the building by the bouncer that you hire. Everybody should hire Uncle Frank bouncers for Thanksgiving. I'm going to start with Trump claiming that we left behind $85 billion worth of military equipment in Afghanistan when he pulled out. I feel like Uncle Frank's going to mention that. So two things about that. Number one, that's how it always works when you exit a war. Yep. You're going to leave stuff. That's just... How it works. And two, Trump's off by more than an order of magnitude with the number. But regardless, minutes later, Trump talked about how he is going to keep America out of foreign wars. He also added the following about his four years in office. He was in office for four years, just to remind everybody. Exact quote, I've gone decades, decades without a war. The first <laughs> president to do it for that long a period. Unless you count Afghanistan, which we were at war with when he got in and came out of office, which we, by the way, spent $200 billion on at least while he was president. So like, even if your numbers weren't made up bullshit, Biden would still be winning in this by this metric. Yeah, I was going to say, though, if we're counting the parts where you weren't president, Donald, you and 45 other guys are tied for last when it comes to overseeing wars <laughs> right. in America. <laughs> <laughs> right. And if Trump was in office for decades, then Biden's already been in for a decade. And, you know, he'd, he's done much better. I agree. OK, next lie, which I guess that works as a segue for just about every Trump story ever, mm -hmm. especially yeah. this one. Trump claimed that no president ever has received a single dollar for our country in tariffs from China until he came along, <laughs> which is, I guess, technically correct, because that's not how fucking tariffs work. Sure, so yeah. He got it right by accident via ignorance. Tariffs get paid by American import companies in that context. And then the actual cost gets paid by American consumers. But none of that is what Trump meant. Let's assume tariffs were paid like as a check by Mr. China made out to the president of the United States. If that's how it worked, U.S. presidents have been making money on that for two centuries. Trump's number of zero, or not even one dollar, is off by about $12 billion a year if you just compare it to Obama's administration. Right. Well, it's, now, but to be fair, if we're measuring it on personal checks that sitting presidents got from China, I feel like Trump does have a substantial lead. Though, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you, if you want to brag about being the first president to cough for a tip at the end of diplomatic <laughs> meetings, <laughs> go for it, Donnie. <laughs> Great. All right. Next lie. Trump fit actually two enormous lies into a single sentence with this one. He claimed that nobody is worried about nuclear weapons because we're all obsessed with the environment, even though they say that's his authority. They mm -hmm. say that ocean levels are only going to rise about an eighth of an inch over the next 200 to 300 years. That's what they said. The, the actual answer comes from scientists at the National Ocean Service, for example, rather than unspecified they. According to real people and a thing with a name, the people have names too, I'm sure, the sea level along the U.S. coastline is likely to rise about 10 to 12 inches in the next 30 years. Jesus. J just for context, that's the rise that's been measured over the last 100 years from 1920 to 2020. We know that. Yeah, and also, th like, like that number doesn't have to be big. 
<laughs> I mean, so, like, global sea level mm-hmm. rise is a much of a, like a metric of how bad it is as a consequence of how bad it is. So, th- this would be a lot like saying, like, well, this fever of 112 isn't that big a deal because it's only like three millimeters above normal on my thermometer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, Trump usually gets confused between 10 inches and an eighth of an inch in the other direction. So, it's <laughs> equally confusing. It's really. Yeah. Really a stumper. It's like toad, like a little mushroom, right? <laughs> so we also got a lie about classified documents, obviously. Out of nowhere, in the middle of the speech, Trump said Obama took a lot of things with him when he, when he left. It was like Trump was having a secret argument with some invisible entity, and this part of the speech was Trump's side of that phone call argument starting halfway in, out of nowhere. Here's the real thing that happened. The National Archives and Records Administration has a facility in Chicago, Illinois, near the site for Obama's planned presidential library. And documents went to that facility. And also Obama went there because he he lives there. <laughs> end of thing. That's, That's the, the end of the conspiracy. Yes. <laughs> Trump got Trump got confused by Chicago having multiple buildings and multiple people. Yep. Sure. And and quick reminder, by the way, this is not the first time he got confused by the concept of multiple buildings. You guys, you remember the time that he told his aides they needed to convince South Korea to move Seoul? Yeah, <laughs> I do. Donald, Donald, I, I can tell you're just jealous. And they're going to build you a presidential library. They're just trying to find the right ketchup to match the curtains. You know, it takes a <laughs> while. Lord, you got to keep the motif. <laughs> All right. Okay, there's just so many lies left. We're going to have to finish it out. With like a lightning round to just get through a bunch of them. I'm also have to (laughs) skip some of them too. So Trump said gas prices are up to eight dollars a gallon. Nope. That's the (laughs) check. He said it's because of Biden. Also, nope, not how it works. He also complained at the same time that Biden used some of the strategic oil reserves, which is actually one of the only things that the president of the United States can do to reduce the gas price a bit. Yeah, right. He said that Biden confused Idaho and Florida. Nope. There was actually a fake headline from a satirical website that said Biden confused Idaho and Iowa that Trump repeated earlier this month. And then it turns out it was Trump last week who actually confused Florida and Iowa. Yeah. So that's what actually happened right. in terms of confusing states, you dumb fuck. Someone and- forgot about Florida. <laughs> What other thing Trump bragged about the amazing border wall that he made exact quote. We completed the wall and then we said, let's do more. And we did a lot more after completing it, allegedly. And one more time, here's the actual number in reality about the wall. In four years, Trump built 47 total miles of new barriers where none had previously existed. That's out of. 1,300 miles of open border that had no fencing. Okay, but I think you're not acknowledging how grateful Mexicans are to be protected from 47 miles of Americans. He, you know, <laughs> yeah, okay. No, there, there's value there. That's true. That's true. <laughs> One other detail. When he announced the campaign, Trump said, I'm going to make America great and glorious again. So now, hashtag... Magaga is their stupid <laughs> So, happy fucking Thanksgiving. I, personally, am thankful for an idiot who is single-handedly fracturing the Republican Party That's ahead of the next right. big presidential election. Mm-hmm. That's right, everybody. Going to be a lot of third-party encouragement this election cycle on this podcast. <laughs> Go Lion Party! Or whatever is stupid thing yeah, he's going to call it. Yeah, the Magaga Party, yeah. <laughs> All right. On that note, we're going to take a quick break for a word from our sponsor, Policy Genius. And you see this plan here? You put your money in a hole, and when you dig it up, there's going to be more of it. But how? Uh, oh, that's a great question. That's from the money seeds. Hey, Noah, who's this? Oh, this is a normal life insurance agent. He's here to talk to me about the normal life insurance process. Uh, Chris okay. Kressner, have a sweaty business card. For me? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Tur- turns out that life insurance is super complicated, but his company and his company alone is the best one. Wh- what a coincidence. Right? <laughs> Who would have thought? No offense, Mr. 
Kressner, but uh, Noah, have you tried Policy Genius? What's Policy Genius? Policy Genius was built to modernize the life insurance industry. Their technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from top companies like AIG and Prudential in just a few clicks to find the lowest price. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $17 a month for $500,000 of coverage. And Policy Genius has licensed agents who can help you find options that offer coverage in as little as a week and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Plus, they're not incentivized to recommend one insurer over another, so you can trust their guidance. No added fees, and your personal info is private. Ooh, D- uh, do you do that? Oh, no, I'm actually texting my boss your blood type right now. I, I don't love that. Yeah, me neither. So your loved ones deserve a financial safety net, and you deserve a smarter way to find and buy it. Just head to policygenius.com or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com. All right. Well, sorry, Cress, but I think we're done here. Um, would, would you like your sweaty business card back? Uh, yeah, please. These cost literally nuns of dollars. Sure. Hmm. Yep. Vista print. Yeah. Yeah, it says Vista print. The on key them. is you get the nun. Yeah, you don't have to pay to take off their brand. <laughs> it's a scam. <laughs> like the Fed. And we're back. Next up in headlines, in the B is for bipartisan news, the Senate <laughs> took a crucial step towards enshrining LGBTQ rights on Wednesday when they advanced the Respect for Marriage Act, clearing the biggest procedural hurdle it'll face on the way to becoming a law. And yes, that means overcoming the bullshit supermajority requirement in the Senate, which meant roping in no fewer than 12 Republican senators willing to publicly state that gay people should have rights. And as long as you don't stop to think about how depressing it is that that's encouraging, that's really encouraging. <laughs> I stopped to think how depressing it is. Damn it, it's I just, just... This is all... It's lots of weird chanting, man. It's like, just over 20% of Republican senators are not bigots in, in this only one particular yes, way. Right, right. But that's really bad chant. Like, I'm not trying to ruin that that chant, but, but also, you know, four out of five, actually more than that, Republican senators are are bigots in this particular way and a bunch of other ways is another way of saying that same information yep. from my amazing chant earlier. So it's just not good with chance. Yeah, I mean, it's a national embarrassment until you look up how many of these guys were not only alive, but serving as senators when integrating the schools was a touchy issue. Yeah. So, you yeah. know. Yep. Yeah. So, no, to be clear, this is not a law yet. Uh, the bill just advanced out of committee this week, so it still needs to pass a full vote in the Senate, then it needs to go back to the House for another vote, and then Biden needs to sign it, and then it'll become law. But with supermajority support in the Senate and a few more weeks of Democratic majority in the House, there's no reason to think that that stuff won't all happen. Uh, the bill is expected to be signed into law shortly after Thanksgiving. Uh, okay, the, the chant from before isn't locked in yet, but maybe after yes, Thanksgiving. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the chant- Eventually. So, no, but still, we're making a lot of jokes, but this bill is a big deal. Right? It, it's still a half measure, though. So according to the Human Rights Campaign, it will, quote, codify federal marriage equality by guaranteeing the federal rights, benefits, and obligations of marriage in the federal code, repeal the Discriminatory Defense of Marriage Act, and affirm that public acts, records, and proceedings should be recognized by all states, end quote. In other words, if you get gay married in some other state, the, other, the state that you're in now has to still accept that that's a real thing. Uh, what it won't do, though, is force states to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples. In other words, it does stop short of equality and to win republican support they had to add a bunch of bullshit exceptions for churches religious universities and religious nonprofits. and then uh, like they apparently also had to add language clarifying that the government wouldn't recognize polygamous marriages <laughs> restrictions apply see fine print for details <laughs> the thing is four out of five they're all yes. <laughs> I, just, I love that moment on the floor okay so we're agreed no polygamy Except for the senator from Utah, who would like it noted that he has allergies, he's not crying, and we're a bunch of bigots, okay? <laughs> and to to that... his credit, Romney actually did support it. But, so, no, of course, as important as it is to not oversell this thing, it's just as important not to undersell it. Uh, because keep in mind that as recently as 2004, Republicans were scrambling to put and gays don't count measures on ballots as a way of improving Republican turnout. 
right? In, in, in 2008, Barack Obama determined that public support for gay marriage wasn't politically viable. And whether or not he was right about that, the fact that a Democratic presidential candidate, uh, one that heavily relied on the youth vote, no less, could even think that seems antiquated 14 years on. Right. Hell, they say the fucking Mormon church endorsed the Respect for Marriage Act. Now, now, granted, that was after all the bullshit, but it doesn't count for you. Provisions were added to it. But that's still a pretty big step. Yeah. OK, good step. But I'm having a lot of trouble congratulating the, the kid who threw a centuries long temper tantrum of bigotry because the kid finally stopped after getting some compromise in his direct. Fuck you. Absolutely yeah, not. Yeah. I feel like we've been gentle parenting a country that needs corporal punishment for a while now, <laughs> Heath. I get it. I get it. So now, okay. as, as big a deal as the bill itself is, the fact that any meaningful legislation whatsoever got passed through this Senate is probably a bigger deal. Right. And for that, we need to tip our hats to Senator Tammy Baldwin, the bill's lead Ooh. sponsor and the first openly gay woman to be elected to both the House and Senate. See, when the first version of this bill passed through the House, it was generally seen as a show vote, right? Like a, like a way of reminding progressive voters that Democrats, this is what Democrats stand for, right? And, and as a way of forcing Republicans that were maybe in swing districts to take a stance against gay marriage uh, leading into the midterms. A stance that, to be clear, 70% of Americans disagree with, according to recent polling. And, and there was every indication that the vote was going to be the same thing in the Senate, but Baldwin figured that it could be more than that if, you know, they waited on a few of those senators to be lame duck anyway. And she urged the Senate to delay the vote until after the midterms. In other words, she chose actual progress over winning a few political points. Yeah, that's good stuff. But also, it's another reminder that the Senate is an anti-democracy fucking scam. If 70% of Americans agree with something and only a begrudging 62% of senators agree, mm -hmm. we're doing it wrong. The Senate needs to be changed. I need to see that headline all the time until we fix it. It's a scam. Okay, I hear you, Heath. I hear you, but... I'm also pretty sure we could convince 70% of this country to vote for turning the Great Lakes into Kool-Aid. So there does need to be a buffer. <laughs> right. Okay. Yes. A check against the people. Yeah. Can't have democracy. So now, but let's. Okay. Let's, we call what, what happens. Yeah. I That's like better. Oligarchy. That's better. Um, and so now, but let's be clear. This, this actually was a real gamble. Delaying this vote was a real gamble because like forcing senators like Marco Rubio and, and Ron Johnson to, to cast a vote that would have alienated independent voters might have moved the needle in those races. And, and given the margin of, uh, of his victory, that may well have cost Johnson his seat altogether. So th there was a real downside to delaying this thing, and there was no guarantee that it would pass. But Schumer agreed to do the gasp moral thing over the expedient thing, and it looks like the end result is going to be a genuine step towards equality. Next up in headlines, in the Musk of Failure news, you know... Due to the nature of our show being bi-weekly, we can, from time to time, get to a news story a little later than we'd like. But some stories evolve so rapidly and ongoingly that getting to look back at their development over a two-week period is, instead, a treat. And that is certainly the case as we check in with Elon Musk's ego-driven destruction <laughs> of the website Twitter.com. God, he's the fucking worst. <laughs> he's like every new bar manager that shows up when I was bartending. They think they're going to do a paradigm shift in bartending. And they're, All right, we're going to put the stools on the inside of the bar. And we lost $44 billion in beer. <laughs> Fuck. I feel like Mark Zuckerberg and Jeff Bezos owe him a lunch for soaking up all the tech billionaire turns out to be an idiot when they're called upon to actually business headlines for the right? cycle, though. Okay, so let's sum this up. Uh, Elon's daddy is a literal slave owner who gave him an emerald mine for his birthday. Mm -hmm. uh, then Elon bought himself a science-adjacent degree. He runs a car company whose death rate rivals the car from the Stephen King novel, Christine. <laughs> and then he bought Twitter. Or maximum over time. <laughs> after trying to call Baxi's but then getting sued in every possible direction for it because, hey, if 2020 onward has a theme, it's idiots discover that there are, in fact, laws. Yeah, well, or in Trump's case, that there might be laws. Yeah. Possible laws, yeah. So he owned Twitter, and he has proceeded since then to own himself so astoundingly that if this were anyone else in the world i would assume that this was some kind of played out humiliation kink that had gotten way out of control uh but nope it's just him 
So let's see. Uh, first, on his first day, he tweeted a picture of himself carrying a bathroom sink into the building with the caption, let that sink in. And then I assume he handed that sink to someone who was like, I'm sorry, what What do I do with this? This is a, a large ceramic fixture. I, we don't have a place for them. But he was gone. So they probably just, you know, gently laid it against the curb outside the building or something. Just right next to a giant old timey ocean mine on that curb, too. He's just like, okay, it's all mine, as that phrase could have gone worse. That could have gone definitely worse. <laughs> Elon, can you just find a small fucking homophone to do your stupid fucking puns? It's God. huge. Jesus, that was the worst use of a bathroom prompt to make a bad rhetorical point since Eric Hovine brought his toilet seat to the unveiling of that atheist bench in Florida, right? <laughs> oh, that takes me back. <laughs> We thought he was going to shit on our bench. <laughs> yeah, we did. So then Elon announced a new $8 verification system called Twitter Blue that was, at first, resoundingly mocked and rejected. That is, until people realized that they could use it to impersonate companies to users who weren't aware of the system yet, leading to a variety of hilarious parodies. Uh, the best of which was, unquestionably, the parody of the pharmaceutical company Eli Lilly, whose parody announced that insulin would be free from now on, causing the actual Eli Lilly stock price to take a nosedive of hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah, I feel like cyber terrorists all over the world are just like, okay, hold on, hold on. everybody chill, everybody chill, just, just let it happen, just do it for us, it's all good. This guy's fucking great. He's like a digital Rube Goldberg failure machine for the whole internet. And somehow he just has bowling balls rolling in every direction. <laughs> Stock markets, different countries, idiot. Yeah, but don't worry. He covered. doesn't just have bad ideas as a businessman. He's also a terrible person as well. So Elon has favored us with a shotgun blast of announcements like changing Twitter's hate speech policy to no longer include the dead naming or misgendering of trans people, which, by the way, no way coincides with the fact that his trans daughter goes no contact and his ex-wife is dating a trans woman now. That's, that's uh, just a coincidence. Completely unrelated. Yeah, as toxic as Twitter is. We need to periodically remind everyone that the whole reason he bought the thing in the first place is that he didn't think it was toxic enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He also reinstated the count of unintentional comedians Jordan Peterson and the Babylon Bee. And as of just a couple hours before this recording, also the account of attempted insurgent and presidential candidate Donald Trump. Yeah. Then he explained that the way he would counter hate speech on the platform was not by censoring or banning accounts, but by making sure they showed up less in Twitter feeds and wouldn't be promoted. So shadow banning. Yeah. He invented <laughs> shadow banning. Yeah. To be a champion of free speech, I decided to make a very opaque... Fuck, did we go bankrupt just now? <laughs> <Does> that... <laughs> My opaque free speech champion thing didn't go well? Okay. Yeah. Which brings us, of course, to the last few days. After laying off 50% of Twitter's workforce, Elon sent out an email telling employees to prepare to go hardcore and be in hardcore mode or leave the company. And since everyone knows that going hardcore means work like the slaves in my daddy's mine, a lot of those employees took that offer. According to the New York Times, as many as 1,200 of the remaining 3,000 or so employees quit just this past weekend alone. Yeah. No, the Washington Post had the total number of people who quit in response to that email at 70% of the remaining <laughs> workforce. Because to be clear, and, and, and obviously, like, the 70% who were most confident about their ability to get another job, so probably the 70 best percent that were best qualified— Right, because his his again, his ultimatum was agree to work a hell of a lot harder for the same money or don't. Yeah. <laughs> so this in turn has led to even more unhinged emails with Elon sending a mass email to staff that said, quote, Anyone who actually writes software, please report to the tenth floor at two PM today, end quote. <laughs> And then a, a follow-up email where he asked employees working in certain areas of the websites to fly to Twitter HQ. 
What? For that same meeting. So like morning of, he wanted them there by 2 p.m. <laughs> and he did all of this in spite of the fact that this past Friday, Twitter offices shut down entirely. <laughs> so yeah, that's what's going on while Elon ensures us that Twitter has never been going better. Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah. And just to put some numbers on all of that, Twitter stockholders voted to sell to Elon Musk at $54.20 a share on September 13th. The stock closed at 41.74 that day. Between then and Musk taking over on October 27th, the stock actually went up in value to well, it's still definitely not 54.20, mm-hmm. but it def- it did go up. And then right when he got into power, he took the company private and delisted the stock. So instead of it saying, wow, almost zero on the big board, it says <laughs> N slash A. <laughs> Fucking nailed it. Never been better. Stop asking for a number. Shut up. It's, yeah. it's not. There is no number now. I did that with my mile runtime in middle school. I get it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and to, yeah, and he keeps bragging about how Twitter usage has never been higher. Like they, they're they're running the thing on a skeleton crew. Advertisers are fleeing like a Russian draft was declared. And the actual state of affairs is we've never worked harder or made less money at any point in our history. This is yeah. the, the brilliant fucking businesser Elon Musk does not realize that isn't bragworthy. Amazing. No, he does not. <sighs> yeah. So. This is all fantastic, right? One of the world's richest dummies is just given the entire planet a starting on third base doesn't make you a fast runner lesson. He's killing the Nazi Bluebird website. And yes, for those of you who have asked over the last few weeks, you can find us on Mastodon, where we are at P-I-A-T pod at Mastodon.world. And personally, I'm at at Eli Bosnick at Mastodon.world and Noah and Heath will be there as soon as they can figure out whatever the fuck I just said. <laughs> I already have it. So I have at, at Heath and right at Mastodon.world. Hey, see, it. he's an early adopter. I also probably will have one of those. One of those. <laughs> <laughs> and while we're thinking of the inevitable pain that's in store for Tim as he explains that website to us, let's turn things over to our next sponsor this week, BetterHelp. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Hi, I'm Tyler. As a series of in-office recordings have informed you, I work for the former president. Tyler, Tyler, we need to start patenting Magaga hats right away. We need to get those. As you can imagine, my job can be stressful. I'm so happy you guys are back. I literally haven't pooped since you left. Unfortunately, life doesn't come with a user manual, so when it's not working for you, it's normal to feel stuck. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. Donald, come hash me with my bag. I bring a Christmas tree. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat. That's BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat. You guys know I'm governor now, right? What's that governor? Yeah, I was hoping you guys would know. <sighs> Do you not? Nosh. And we're back. Next up in headlines in FIFA faux fum news. The World Cup kicked off yesterday with Qatar getting defeated by Ecuador by a score of 2-0 in the first half. I don't know. We're recording during the match. I don't know how it actually worked out, but probably something like that. Um, So anyway, uh, the point is that the World Cup is underway, marking the first time a Middle Eastern nation has ever hosted the nearly century-old event Uh, And also probably the last one, because holy fucking shit, has it been a disaster (laughs) so far. Uh, And we're one day in. It was like a... It was like a pre-zaster. It, it, it started with allegations of bribery and corruption in the selection process, because honestly, why the fuck would you choose Cutter if you weren't bribed? Uh, in fact, Cutter isn't just accused of bribes. They're accused of straight-up black ops, including hiring former CIA officers to spy on rival teams and key officials involved in the selection process. Okay, but they're doing great with PSG in Paris over there. Neymar, mm-hmm. Messi, they re Mbappe. They know how to buy football. They do. And that's the game everyone else is playing, too, if we're being honest. 
FIFA yeah. is indeed for sale. We also know that for sure. Ask Sepp Blatter. But being a theocracy and also a consummate host to the world, yeah, not great. Yeah. Not a good idea. No. I do think it's cool that if you buy FIFA 2022 for the PlayStation, it puts all the women in burkas, though. That's a nice mod, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, right, out. exactly. It's very... Uh, very inclusive of them. Uh, but bribery was, of course, only the tip of the controversy iceberg. Uh, the Wikipedia article on the World Cup has nine separate subheadings for the controversy section. And the first one is, quote, migrant workers, slavery allegations and deaths, end quote. So, like, that's, that's nine categories, <laughs> not just nine controversies. Um, the, the, the nation's abhorrent record on LGBTQ rights, women's rights and just rights is a general concept uh, have all been a source of controversy and though this is a minor thing in the grand scheme of of cutter's corruption i have to point out that in 2022 they started a fan engagement program where they'd pay air travel housing and even a per diem to fans but those fans would be hand selected by the government required to sing and chant on command <laughs> and have to report any social media posts that they see that are critical of their nation Okay, at the real Qatar just tweeted that oil is free now. Okay, that seems crazy, but there's a blue check mark. Oh, <laughs> oh well, in that okay. case, <laughs> I, I feel like sing and chant on command is a bigger deal breaker than report people for arrest and torture. But you know what? That's me. That's me. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay, spies. Uh, They're the talking late... about spies, not fan engagement. They hired a team <laughs> yeah, of spies. Right. Okay. Yep. Yep, but so but the latest controversy to make headlines, uh, and keep in mind that we're recording Sunday, so this could have been supplanted by the time this comes out on Monday morning, but the latest controversy at the time of this recording was the country's surprise decision to ban the sale of alcohol at the eight stadiums that will host the games. This comes, of course, after Budweiser spent $75 million to sponsor the event. Oh, and, of course... After a million or so fans who were planning to attend already had tickets in hand. Yeah, lots of people pretending they're also mad about the human rights violations at the end of every sentence. Yeah, when talking about uh -huh. I can't get a fucking pint. Yeah, no. Also the slavery. Yeah, totally. No, that's that sucks. <laughs> Too, but like, are you? I already have tickets. What is this slave boy going to bring me a fucking juice? Be serious. Be serious. yeah. Right. <laughs> no, a whole lot of the depressing amount of that. Yeah. Now, this has long been a source of potential controversy, and it was pointed out the instant that Qatar was announced as the host country. The uber-conservative Muslim country bans public consumption of alcohol, but it's literally impossible to sit next to a fucking vuvuzela for 90 goddamn minutes without numbing your brain with a couple of beers. So Qatar intimated that they would lift the ban for the purposes of this event, and they continued to intimate that until, like, <laughs> the day before <laughs> yesterday. No, 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 my friends. We are definitely going to violate one of the core tenets of our culture for money we have already received. Just wait, wait for it. Wait <laughs> yes, for it. Yes, yes. Such an obvious lie. Right. Now, for their part, uh, Cutter's government is being a bit cagey about why this decision was made so late in the game, but it may well be because they were afraid that locals would fucking riot over public beer tents. Right. So about a week ago, security officials told the people running the Budweiser tents that they were going to have to move their tents to discrete locations away from places where large crowds might see them. What? Because, because you know, if you're spending eight figures on advertising, you want it to be hidden. You want people to have to earn <laughs> seeing that kind of advertisement. Um, and when asked for an explanation, they were apparently told it was due to security concerns. Okay, whatever. That's ridiculous. But nobody at Budweiser was like, hey, boss. You're going to write a check for $75 million to advertise beer in a place where beer becomes illegal again when we leave after a month? <laughs> That's what you're doing? Will you just say back to me what I just said so you can maybe hear? <laughs> if the higher-ups at Budweiser were open to feedback, their beer wouldn't taste like a Republican horse's urine. So, okay. All right. Yeah, also, That's Europeans, everybody coming from all over, they're not going to like Budweiser, whatever. <laughs> and so, And look... It might seem silly to focus on beer sales when there are legitimate concerns about, like, you know, the safety of LGBTQ attendees, the, the rights of women, the issues of press freedom. But these are all kind of bound up in the same package, right? So Cotter made this decision and declared it non-negotiable days before the tournament started after saying the exact opposite for years. It, so it really calls into question all the guarantees that they made about, like, relaxing their draconian laws against gayness and extramarital sex as well. 
It, it also shatters the illusion that FIFA has any real say on how this tournament is going to progress. Yeah, but if you're willing to take a very long shuttle bus from the stadium, definitely check out Budweiser's Pansexual Fuck Tent. Yeah. That's going to be <laughs> super fun. <laughs> well, so... Yeah, no, that's actually pretty close. So uh, to, to Cutter's credit, this announcement doesn't mean that there won't be any beer at all, right? There, there are still going to be a few designated off-site locations where Cutter has agreed, at least so far, to allow beer sales. And apparently rich motherfuckers who have luxury suites in the stadium uh, will be allowed to drink wine and champagne in them. And in one of the least effective attempts at amelioration in the history of beer... Cutter tried to placate fans by pointing out that the stadium would still be serving non-alcoholic beer. Yeah. Fuck you! So, you know, you, you still have my that. friends. My friends, you could still taste the horse piss. We are on this. You have as much, <laughs> have as much horse piss oh, as you damn want. It. <laughs> <laughs> and next up in headlines in Daywalker news. Oh, well done, Herschel Walker. Took some time away from campaigning for his runoff election for a very important public service announcement about who would win in a fight between a vampire and a werewolf. I'm not even <laughs> slightly He's editorializing not. right no, now. That happened. literally <laughs> happened last week during a stump speech in Georgia. I'm serious. <laughs> Herschel Walker's stories are the free space of Skeptocrat headlines. <laughs> you could have locked us in a room for a thousand hours and been like the stupidest thing Herschel Walker would say. <laughs> <laughs> nope, never would have got it. So... Let me give you some context because, no, obviously, this this sounds crazy what I just said. There is no context. None. No, there's no. no context. It's what I said and that's it. As far as I can tell, he's in the middle of a speech and then, unbeknownst to everyone but him, the following exchange happened. Nobody. Who would win in a fight? A vampire or a werewolf, Herschel? Herschel Walker. Great question, nobody. I saw a vampire movie last night. I'm going to tell you the plot right now. And these are his exact words just out of nowhere in the middle of this stump speech. He said, quote, quote, this is the actual quote. I don't know if you know, but vampires are some cool people. Are they not? But let me tell you something that I found out. A werewolf can kill a vampire. Did you know that? I never knew that. End exact quote. Real fucking quote. Guys, I am 80% sure that we could talk Herschel Walker into agreeing to a fight where we all get rocks and he gets paper. I'm 80% sure I can convince Herschel Walker he can fly at the top of a tall building. So, you know, (laughs) just in case the runoff goes badly. Yeah, all right. Got another runoff for you. So from there, he, he spent the next several minutes literally explaining the plot of some shitty movie he saw. And he, t- he told the story like a five-year-old telling the story and forgetting to breathe in the middle of syllables. And he has to breathe and keep going. And after he finally gets done with that, it was so long listening to somebody describe a fucking movie. After that whole thing is done, he explains that a werewolf can kill a vampire. And he says... So I don't want to be a vampire anymore. I want to be a werewolf. <laughs> what <laughs> so the fuck is that? Does he know that he's running for senator and not Castlevania monster? <laughs> Your guess is as good as ours. Oh, okay, Noah, Jesus. that's a solid point because if he is running for Castlevania monster, his campaign is making a ton more sense to me right now. Yeah, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I guess one of his handlers finally got his attention and snapped him out of his fugue state about this fucking vampire movie. And Walker went back to the script, like, as if we didn't just see that happen on national television. (laughs) He just sucked in one more giant breath like a five-year-old, and he said, and that's where it is in our life. It doesn't even work unless you have faith. We gotta have faith. And honestly, that part, I was impressed by. That segue out, because... He was talking about a scene in whatever vampire movie that had holy water and a cross involved. And then he was like, speech, right? So Sorry, fuck. So that is why you got to be Christian for killing vampires with faith. <laughs> or you could be a werewolf because they're a fucking badass, right? Nobody answered when I said before. You, you guys agree that werewolves are better. No, sorry, speech. And okay, I said I'm impressed because that, 
explanation is literally tied with all the other explanations I've heard for why I'm a Christian from somebody. Yeah, right. For vampire killing, that's at least as reasonable. And also, like, you can't go straight back from, like, whimsical fantasy to dour reality in your speech. you got to ease the audience back in with dour fantasy (laughs) first. I get it. You segue with religion. I like it. And just one last thing about this. The article about this whole story from Business Insider. I don't know why I was at Business Insider, but that's where I found one of the articles. They had the best post article update I've ever seen. So it was originally posted on November 16th, their article. And then they added the following the next day at the bottom. It says (laughs) November 17th. This story has been updated to reflect that it's possible Herschel Walker was only discussing the topic of werewolves, not describing the plot of a movie. <laughs> End of update. <laughs> this so, may have been even dumber. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Somebody's job at Business Insider was to write that sentence. Right. Which inevitably means that someone else's job at Business Insider was to drag that guy away from the window in their office. <laughs> <laughs> And God damn it. Okay, sorry. I got to bring down the mood. Just a quick reminder. Herschel Walker still might win a seat in the U.S. Senate. Fucking vote in Georgia. Vote everywhere else, too. 48.5% of Georgians looked at that guy and thought, yeah, Senator. He almost already won. (sighs) And finally tonight, in the prefixes in news, wake up, honey, the new metric prefixes just dropped. That's right. No more clumsy references to a thousand yada meters or a millionth of a yoctagram for you because the International System of Units, or confusingly SI, has announced four new prefixes (laughs) that will streamline our discussion of the very large and the very small. I gotta say, France has a weirdly strong foothold in acronyms and initialisms. Right? Yeah. They got SI, they got FIFA, right? They got FIDE for Mm -hmm. chess. I don't know how they did it. Well, you know, it's because we handle change so well already. I feel like yeah, you know. right, yeah. <laughs> so now, so in addition to the kilo, mega, giga, tera, peta, exa, zeta, and yada that you know and love, we are now going to add rana, which denotes a one with twenty-seven zeros, and a queta, which is a one with thirty zeros. And on the opposite of the end of the scale, meaning an octillionth and a nonillionth respectively, you've got ronto, and replacing yada as my favorite metric prefix. Quecto. Okay, that's awesome. And uh, used in a sentence, about half the population of the world is in the bottom quectile in terms of wealth. So that's fun. (laughs) Capitalism is quectile dysfunction. (laughs) (laughs) Look, I'm sure there's a good smart person reason for these prefixes and suffixes to change. But if you need to talk about a number with 27 zeros after it quickly... Maybe just say a fuck ton, huh? Like just uh, so a bunch, <laughs> so, well, but, a lot. But but is that a metric fuck ton or an imperial fuck ton, See? Eli? Hello, this is science. Thank you. Matters important. I've been taking it seriously. So so yeah. So this change was finalized by scientists and government representatives attending the twenty seventh General Conference on Weights and Measures, which governs the SI. And despite being entirely dedicated to specificity, meets quote. Roughly every four years. And well, that's how long it takes to recover from all the fucking they do at the conference. <laughs> it is a fuck fest. Um, so, the, but this marks the first time in more than thirty years that the group has felt the need to add to the lexicon with Zeta, Yada, Zepto, and Yocto having been officially added in nineteen ninety one. And where that change was driven mostly by chemists who were tired of resorting to scientific notation every time they had to tell you like how many atoms were in something. The the latest move is primarily driven by data scientists who are trying to describe how awesome their laptop is going to be in 10 years. <laughs> Fucking kids these days with their smartphones and their Avogadro toast. Don't like this. <laughs> That's a smart joke. Now, before everybody gets too excited about the new prefixes, I have to temper your enthusiasm with a little bit of bad news that comes along with this. Oh, but I was riding so high, Noah. Right, yeah, no, I know. I'm I'm sorry, but I gotta be thorough here. See, one of the things that prompted SI to make this move sooner than later was the proliferation of unofficial prefixes that were already doing this work. So for the Ronabite to be born, the Hellabite had to die. That's right. We could have had the goddamn hellameter and hellagram to describe the power of 27, uh, which was apparently already heavily in use uh, by the tech industry. Google used it all the time. But instead, we got the Rana. Boo. 
Boo. And I agree. Right? Noah's becoming a hell evangelist, but I also agree. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. I'm with Noah because eventually a vaccine would have 27 of something. And that's that's just job security for us, baby. Yeah. Right. So now in their defense, the SI didn't dismiss the Hellabyte just for being too awesome for the world. Uh, see, when you're notating this stuff, you have to be able to abbreviate the units. And unfortunately, H is already taken up by the hecto prefix, meaning 100. Uh, in fact, apparently the only remaining unused letters were R and Q, which is why we got what we got. Uh, and in case you're curious, no, they have no inherent meaning. Uh, according to Dr. Richard Brown, head of meteorology at the UK's National Physical Laboratory and main guy who is pushing for this change, quote, there's a precedent that they sound similar to Greek letters and that big numbers end with an A and small numbers with an O, end quote. Jesus. So, right, yeah, there you have it, folks. Science in action. You guys know, like, um, gaba, quap, naba. Yeah, exactly. You know that some of the <laughs> smartest people in the world spent some weekend this year going, quack. Squivel. Snap. Wait, 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 yes, wait, wait, wait. Yes. What was the first Quack, noise you made? Quack, Quack, Quack. quench. <laughs> what, what about quack? Oh. Fudge. Quack. Fudge. Fudge. I keep I saying fudge. We can't do fudge, right? <laughs> no. Fudge feels so good. <laughs> All right. On that fudge quecto note, we're going to close it out. Thanks to No Illusions. Thanks to Eli Bosnick. And thanks to all the listeners who liked us on Facebook, followed us on Twitter. Uh, Mastodon and send us feedback on the other various internets please keep doing that please keep listening and please keep telling your friends not a quecto second Knife. too soon sorry I want to be the first <laughs> excellent the first to say that. if you find the knife stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming please feel free to send us gifts of money at our donation page at patreon.com slash skeptocrat just like Conrad Most Kristen Williams Keith McGillicuddy the third Travis Leonard Friedman Jacob Atkins Finn, Ryan Enbaum, Matthew Maxson, the detective, just listening, regular distance, Joel Tosato, <laughs> and Christopher Arbizi, whose very powerful dicks and vaginas could beat the fuck out of a vampire. Absolutely. <laughs> it's or a werewolf. Or a werewolf. I don't want to be either of those things anymore. I want to be one of your dicks or vaginas. This is weird. And whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent, <laughs> like those fine. This is why I'm not running for Senate. See, I'm not running for Senate. Yeah. I can say things like this. <laughs> if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows The Scathing Atheist, God Awful Movies, DD Minus, and Citation Needed. Available on Apple Music, Stitcher, all those other podcast apps, or the deep web. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penis. Special thanks to Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He's the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. Donald, come hush me with my bag. I bring a Christmas tree. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searches for the right therapist. <laughs> <laughs> I miss her so much. <laughs> also, somebody very clearly just walked past me in the hallway when I was like, I haven't pooped. <laughs> since <you've left." laughs> And that you, I heard him stop and be like, "What? You know what? I'm not. not I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to find out. I'm going to just walking right past." The preceding podcast is a production of Puzzle and Thunderstorm LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved.